This is section 1.7, distance and midpoint formulas. We're going to look at two points that are on a coordinate grid and find the distance between those two that make a segment. And where's the middle of those two? What's the midpoint? We'll call it MP for midpoint. Where is the midpoint of that segment on the coordinate grid? So the distance formula, lowercase d for distance, is the square root of, we're going to take the x values, x2 minus x1, subtract them and square that difference, plus y2 minus y1, subtract that and square the, di square the difference, and then add those two parts together. For midpoint, again, we'll call it mp for midpoint, it's almost, not quite, but the opposite. We're actually going to add the two x values together and divide by 2. It's like we're trying to find the average of the x's to get to the middle. And we'll add the y's and divide by 2 to find the average of the y's. All right, so let's do a couple of these. We want to find the midpoint of AB. So here's my segment AB. I'd like to know where the midpoint is. Because it's on this grid, I can use my formula. It'd be a little hard to, I could try and guess, but I wouldn't know what that exact point is. So if I use the formula, I'm going to add the x values together. Well, what you need to do first is find out where these are located. So this happens to be the point 1, 2 for point A. And point B is over here at negative 4, positive 3. 4 to the left and up 3, which is what makes the point negative 4, 3. So if I add my x's together, that's 1 plus negative 4 divided by 2. And if I add the y's together, that's 3 plus 2 divided by 2. That's going to give me positive, excuse me, negative 3 over 2 for the x and 5 over 2 for the y. It's a little strange to leave them in fraction form, so if I change that to a mixed number, it's negative 1.5, and 5 halves is positive 2.5. And if I look at my grid, negative 1.5, positive 2.5 is about right there, and that's, about, that's the middle of that segment. Let's try it one more time with BC. If we want to find the midpoint of BC, we know it's got to be somewhere in here. See if you can figure out where these points are located first. C is at 0, negative 1, because I'm not going to the right or left at all. I'm just going down 1. So again, if we take the x value, 0 plus negative 4, and divide by 2, negative 1 plus 3, and divide by 2, I'm going to get negative 4 divided by 2, and positive 2 divided by 2. Again, we don't want to leave fractions if we can, so negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. That should be where the midpoint is. So if I say negative 2, positive 1, that's right there. That's my midpoint. All right, pause the video and see if you can find the midpoint of CA, this, point, this segment right here. Okay, hopefully for the midpoint you got negative positive one-half, positive one-half. One-half, one-half kind of puts you right in the middle of that first square, and that's the midpoint of those. All right, let's try distance. We want to find the distance of AB. How long is it between A and B? So the distance formula, we have to take that square root. We're going to take our x values and subtract them. So I'm going to take, and it doesn't technically matter which one is x2 or which one is x1. You just have to be consistent. So if I start with B, I have to go to A both times. So I'm going to say negative 4 minus 1 squared plus the Y values are 3 minus 2 squared. Here's where you need to be careful with your negatives. Negative 4 plus or minus 1 is the same thing as negative 4 plus negative 1. So that's negative 5 in parentheses we're going to square and 3 minus 2 is 1 squared. Negative 5 squared is 25, 1 squared is 1, so the distance is the square root of 26. And that's all I can do with that. If you wanted to, you could get your calculator out and get the approximation. It's going to be a little bit more than 5. 
All right, let's try the distance of BC between these. See if you can set this up with me. We're going to take the x values and subtract them. So I'm going to start with 0 this time. 0 minus negative 4 squared are my x values, plus negative 1 minus 3 squared are my y values. Again, remember two negatives, right? Or that minus the negative is going to become plus plus. Here I can take this and make it plus the opposite. 0 minus negative 4 becomes 0 plus 4, so that is positive 4 squared plus negative 1 plus negative 3 is negative 4 squared. Keep your parentheses there so that you realize when I have positive 4 and I square it, I get 16. When I have negative 4 and I square it, I still get 16. That's the square root of 32. And the square root of 32, I can re-simplify that. Two square root of 32 is 16, and 2, the square root of 16, is 4 square root of 2. If that's something you haven't done, simplifying a radical, you can stop here, but this is an equivalent answer that is simplified. All right, pause the video and see if you can find the distance of CA. Okay, hopefully when you found the distance of CA, you got down to the square root of 10. We have an interesting challenge over here, and unfortunately I wrote on that space, so I'm going to cover it over with another blank one so I can do that work. Hopefully you have some more space down here. You can just draw an arrow. I'm not happy that they use the same letters A, B, and C as up here because this is a brand new set. So we're saying we want to find the coordinates of the endpoint if B is the midpoint of segment AC. In other words, we've got a segment AC. B happens to be the midpoint. And they're telling us A is located at 5, 4. B is located at 6, 3. And they want us to find the other endpoint, meaning they want us to find where is C. They want us to find the X and the Y that go with C. So here we're kind of working a little bit backwards. If I know the midpoint formula, I add the endpoints, divide by 2 to get the midpoint. Well, this time I know the endpoint and one midpoint. I'm trying to find the other endpoint. So think about what we just said. If I'm trying to find the midpoint, I add the two endpoints. So that means I have to add 5 plus x divided by 2, and that should equal the x portion of my midpoint, which in this case is 6. To solve this, I would multiply both sides by 2. I would get 5 plus x, because the 2's are going to cancel, equals 12. When I subtract 5, I get x equals 7. So that means for b, no, for c, the x portion of my midpoint is 7. All right, let's see if we can find the y part of my end point. Again, I'm going to take the y values, so... 4 plus y divided by 2 has to equal the y value of my midpoint, which in this case is 3. Again, if I multiply both sides by 2, these cancel, so I get 4 plus y equals 6. And when I subtract 2, I get y, sorry, when I subtract 4, I get y equals 2. That means this point is located at 7, 2. I took the endpoints, added them, divided by 2 to get the midpoint for x. Added the y values, divided by 2 to get the y midpoint. And then I could just solve that for x and y. All right, we don't always have distance and midpoint on a grid. Sometimes it's just on a number line. So the distance formula, if you're on a number line, simpler is just the absolute value of a minus b. And since you're taking the absolute value, it doesn't matter which one you subtract first. The midpoint, if you're on a number line, is kind of what we did before. We're just going to take the two points that we have and divide by 2 to find the middle. So if I want the distance, I just have to subtract these two values, but make sure it's an absolute value, because distance can never be negative. Sometimes when I subtract, I might end up with a negative answer. That's why I take the absolute value of it. And for the midpoint, 
I'm just going to add the two endpoints together and divide by 2. That will give me the average to say where the midpoint is. So if I want the distance for these first two, it doesn't matter if I say 2 minus 9 or 9 minus 2. Either way, I get the absolute value of 7, which is just 7. If I want the midpoint, I'm going to add the two ends. Say this is A and this is B. I'm going to add 9 plus 2, divide by 2. That means I get 11 over 2. Again, kind of a strange way to look at your midpoint. So if we take that to a decimal, it's 5.5 for the midpoint. And if I look at my number line, 5.5 is right here. Yeah, that's definitely in the middle of both of them. All right, the distance for this one, again, if we said this was A and this was B, I'm just going to subtract negative 2 minus 2 absolute value. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Again, we said you can't have a negative distance. So the absolute value of that is 4. On a number line, if you had it graphed, you could count 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, there's four spaces between them. For the midpoint, I want to add negative 2 plus 2 divided by 2 to find the middle. Well, that's 0 over 2. 0 over 2 doesn't exist, so that should just be 0. 0 on top means my answer is 0. And if you look, the midpoint is definitely right there in the middle at 0. All right, let's do one more together. If you say this is your A and this is your B, just so you can see, we don't have to subtract from right to left. You could subtract the other direction. We're going to say that this B is at 1.5 minus negative 1. We want the absolute value of that. We do plus plus. That means we're going to have... 2.5 and the absolute value of that is 2.5. 1, 2 and a half. Yes, the distance is 2 and a half. The midpoint, if I want to find the middle, that'd be a little harder necessarily to find, which is why we want to calculate it. If I take negative 1 plus 1.5 and divide by 2, I'm going to get 0.5 divided by 2. If I take 0.5 divided by 2, I actually get 0.25. A half divided in 2 is a quarter. So 0.25 would be like right here. <clears throat> okay, take a minute and see if you can do this last one and get the correct answer on your own. All right, if A is here at negative 2.5, between 2 and 3 is negative 2.5 and B is here at positive 2.5. So when you subtract negative 2.5 minus 2.5, that becomes plus a negative. Two negatives add up to a negative 5, but the absolute value is positive 5. That's the distance between here. There's a half and there's a half, and then we have four full spaces. Makes our positive 5 for the distance. And the midpoint, if we add our endpoints and divide by 2, again, we're left with 0 over 5, which is just 0. And that should make sense that the midpoint is right there at zero. This last problem actually involves a little more algebra skills than you've had at this point, so we're going to skip that last one. Two to practice for section 1.7 before you come to class is number three, number five, number 15, and number 19. Number 15 is one that we did like this example that I got for you. So number 15, they're giving you one of the endpoints and the midpoint, and you need to find the other endpoint, which in this case is going to be point x. So you're going to have to work on that working backwards with the formula.